Hello everyone, this is Sexcent and welcome to today's video. In this video, we will be discussing backend development and how can you start and become an efficient backend developer. Let's start by defining what really is backend development. The backend refers to the server side of an application or the code that happens behind the scenes. That means it's not viewed by the user. But because of the backend, it allows the communication between the database and the browser. So when the user inserts data, the browser connects to a web server, and when this web server receives the user's request, it needs to provide the user with the information needed. What backend developers do is they store the user's data in a database that receives and gives data back to the web server, which will give the user information that will be displayed on the browser. I'm gonna list for you the responsibilities of a backend developer. First, storing user's data in a web server and making sure that this data is secured and no one other than that user itself can see it. Other than storing data, there is also accepting payment. And that is a really crucial part because you need to make sure that you secure the payment. Also, you are responsible of the API or application programming interface which allows two applications to talk to each other like what you're doing right now, watching this video displayed by YouTube on the YouTube website. The backend consists of three parts, server, application, and database. A server, which is a piece of hardware or software that provides functionalities to the program. Here are some server software, Apache, Microsoft Internet Information Service, Light TPD Server. Now you don't have to know all of them, at least one of them. And once you land your first job as a backend developer, you will know what requirements you need. And if you are familiar with other server software, let me know down in the comments. Now, once the web server receives information from the user, it sends that information to a web framework, and the framework helps you as a developer to manage data or requests. What web frameworks should you know? Well, I will offer you programming languages as well as the frameworks associated with them. We all know that JavaScript is used on the front end to make websites more interactive, but also used in the back end to update new data and display pop-ups for example. The most popular framework for JavaScript is Node.js and Express.js. Node.js is mostly used. We also have Java, which is faster than JavaScript and can handle more user requests at one go. A framework associated with Java is Spring. We have also Python. It is the most popular language as well as the easiest one to learn. The popular Python frameworks are Django and Flask. We have the programming language built by Microsoft itself, which is called c -sharp. An alternative to Java, the frameworks used are ASP.NET Core and ASP.NET MVC. We use object relational mapping to connect with the database. This ORM is responsible of converting data from the database to objects. But usually in the backend, we use structured query language or SQL to manage and receive data. The ORM writes most of the data received to structured queries and sends them to the database. But as a backend developer, you need to know how to write your own queries. The most popular language used is MySQL or MySQL, so take some time mastering it. Now what the backend developer should do is update the browser because new data has been inserted. So the backend developer must know enough HTML to be able to update the web page. Also, the developer should have two versions running on his computer to add new features and on the browser. That's why we use version control system like Git that helps you manage the source code. So let's wrap it up here. First, user inserts data. Then, browser connects to a web server which must provide the user with information. The web server then sends the user request to a web framework to manage that request, then goes to an ORM that writes structured query code, then sends the data to a database that will manage it, and then give the data as an object. After that, the data travels back to the web server and the web server sends it to the browser so it will be displayed for the user. What should you learn? First, you need to know a bit of front-end skills like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Then familiarize yourself with server softwares you are interested in or that you'll use working in a particular company. Then learn a framework. If you like Python, go for the Django. If you like Java, go for Spring. Actually, once you know a framework, it will be easy to learn another. Then learn a structured query language like MySQL or PostgreSQL. Also, you need to learn a version control system like Git. And that's all you need to know on how to become a backend developer. I hope by now you know all the tools to start your journey as a backend developer. 
Now some people still don't know the difference between front end and back end. Check out this video that will explain everything on how to start as a front end developer.